Hello, welcome to another vlog. So this time uh, I do have a quick update for you and that is I finally heard back from the foreign office for my appointment to look at becoming a German citizen. So I have an appointment. Basically all they did was they sent me an email with an appointment, a date and a time for me to go there. So I'm recording this at the end of July. It will probably go out in August sometime, but my appointment isn't until January. <laughs> so they're, they are making appointments six months ahead of time. But that's okay. I would rather sit around twiddling my thumbs with an appointment than without. So today I thought I would start preparing and that is I'm going to take a look at the German citizenship test. So if, when, if ever you want to become a citizen of another country, part of that is taking a test to, I, I'm actually not sure why we do it exactly, but it's a part of basically every naturalization process. So, so let's take a look at the German one. I will try and translate for you as we go, and hopefully it won't be too confusing. So let's get started. First off, I'm looking at the requirements for naturalization in Germany. If you are living in Germany permanently, you can become naturalized under certain circumstances. It costs a fee of 255 euros for adults and 51 euros for minors. There are certain conditions. You must have an unrestricted residence permit. You must pass the naturalization test. You must have lived in Germany for eight years. You must have a way to earn money that does not require that you be on welfare. You must speak decent German. You must not be convicted of a criminal offense. You must be willing to follow the German constitution. You must give up your former nationality. On to the naturalization test. Each test consists of 33 questions and you must get at least 17 correct. The topics of the questions are living in a democracy, history and responsibility, and people and society. Three of the questions will be specific to the land or basically the state that you live in. The test itself costs 25 euros to take. You must, of course, bring a legal form of identification. The database of questions contains 300 questions in total that you could be asked, as well as 10 only relevant to your federal land or region specific. Then there's a reminder that the test itself will be in German. So let's take a look at the questions. I'm taking a sample test. As mentioned, this site switches to German. This page just explains how to navigate the pages, but here I realize that the text is a bit small for a video, so zooming in. Hope you can read it easier now. And let's go. Question one. Which is the coat of arms of the Federal Republic of Germany? I think anyone who has spent more than a week in Germany should know this. It's pretty common knowledge. It's number one, the eagle. But I took a second to figure out what to do next until I realized that it reloads the page when I answer. So I just have to hit the link to the next question. Question two. At which festival do people in Germany wear colorful costumes and masks? Gee. I wonder, sorry, that's sarcasm. I used to live in Düsseldorf, so of course, Rosenmontag. That's when Carnival is celebrated. Most people should know that if they live in Germany. Question three, beginning at what age can one in Germany participate in an election to the German Bundestag? So by participate, I'm assuming they mean vote in an election, and that's 18. Question four, what is in unity with the German constitution? Now, I wasn't sure if I understood the question. The possible answers are, the beating penalty, torture, the death penalty, or the fine penalty. Since I wasn't sure the answer, I thought they might just mean which of these was mentioned in the Constitution, and I did know that the death penalty has been outlawed, so I guessed that one. 
Question five, what are the first words of the German national anthem? I feel like this one is also common knowledge. Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit. So answer two. Question six, when can a political party be banned in Germany? The answers are if their campaign is too expensive, if they are working against the constitution, if they criticize the head of state, or if their program suggests a new direction. For me, I felt that was pretty clear if they are working against the constitution. Question seven, what does the abbreviation CDU mean in Germany? CDU is a political party in Germany and stands for Christlich Demokratische Union or Christian Democratic Union, pretty common knowledge. Question eight, for how many years is the Bundestag elected? Two, four, six, or eight? And I was fairly certain it was four. Question nine, elections in Germany are special, secret, tied to career, or dependent on gender. I thought that was an oddly worded question, but I'm pretty sure they are secret. No one is allowed to know how you voted. Question 10. Freedom of opinion in Germany means that I can yell at passersby on the street, can express my opinion in written form, can wear Nazi symbols, can express my opinion as long as it doesn't contradict the government. And the only answer that wasn't completely absurd is answer 2. Can express my opinion in written form. Question 11. What is the 5% hurdle in Germany? Election rules in Bundestag for small parties, attendance controls in Bundestag for polls, minimum amount of votes in order to enter parliament, attendance controls in federal council for polls. I felt like it had to something to do with the number of votes a party needed to enter Bundestag, but that's somehow halfway between option one and three, uh, so I guessed one. Number 12. In a democracy, a function of regular elections is to force the citizens to vote, allow a change of government according to the will of the majority, keep the laws of the land, give the poor more power. Obviously, allow a change of government according to the will of the majority. Yeah. Question 13. In Germany, a mayor is the leader of a school, the boss of a bank, the leader of a community, or the leader of a party. Clearly, the leader of a community. Question 14. What is allowed at the Bundestag and Landtag elections in Germany? The husband votes for his wife. One can submit his vote by letter. One can submit their vote over the phone. Children over the age of 14 can vote. Obviously, voting by letter is allowed, but not over the phone, as that would be too easy to falsify. Question 15. A judge in Germany belongs to judicial, executive, operative, or legislative. Clearly judicial. Question 16. What is forbidden by the German Constitution? Military service, slavery, free choice of career, work overseas. Obviously slavery, or at least I should hope so. Question 17, we're getting into history. The Third Reich was a dictatorship, democracy, monarchy, republic. Dictatorship is correct. Question 18, what is the mark of a Nazi state? Politics of state racism, freedom of opinion, general religious freedom, or the development of a democracy. As we all know, the Nazis were best known for state racism. Question 19. Please don't make fun of me for this one. I am not great at exact dates. What happened on the 9th of November 1938 in Germany? The Second World War began with the invasion of Poland. The Nazi party lost a vote to disband and disbanded the Reichstag. Jewish businesses and synagogues were destroyed by Nazis and their followers. Hitler became president and forbade all other parties. So I know 1938 was the beginning of the Second World War. I think all of those things happened, but I'm not sure which one happened on that exact date. So in the end, I had to guess. I don't know this one. I, I don't know this one. Which one? Well, this is a question about history, and I don't know the answer. <sighs> what happened on the 9th of November, 1938? Um, I don't know. See, I don't know either. I'm just guessing here. 
not right. It's wrong. I don't know. Question 20. What happened during the time of the Nazis in Germany? The prohibition of parties, the right to development of personalities, freedom of the press, the protection of human dignity. The only one I know of that happened was the prohibition of parties. Question 21. Why do people call fall of 1989 in the GDR the turning point? In this time, politics in the GDR changed from a dictatorship to a democracy from a liberal market economy to socialism, from a monarchy to social democracy, from a religious state to a communist state. Okay, we're talking East Germany, so from a dictatorship to a democracy. Question 22. The Federal Republic of Germany has the current borders since 1933, 1949, 1971, or 1990. Well, these exact borders have only been the country's borders since the reunification of East and West Germany in 1990, so that's my final answer. Question 23. European Parliament is voted in regularly, namely every five years, six years, seven years, or eight years. I'm pretty sure the European Parliament that controls the EU is voted for every five years. Question 24. Which country is a neighbor of Germany? Finland, Denmark, Norway, or Sweden? Basic geography, Germany only shares a border with Denmark on that list. Question 25. The Career Information Center, BIZ, is the unemployment office in Germany helps with retirement calculations, search for teaching positions, tax returns, or health insurance. Well, the only two on that list that have anything to do with career is retirement and teaching positions. I'm actually not sure about this one, so I'm going to have to guess, and I'm guessing retirement. Question 26. A couple would like to open a restaurant in Germany. What do they absolutely need? Permission from the police, agreement of a political party, agreement from the registration office, or a permit to serve food from the responsible department. The only one that makes sense to me is the permit to serve food. Question 27. An adult woman in Germany would like to get her high school diploma after the fact. She can do this at a college, an evening high school, a lower high school, or a private university. I can't remember this one. I think you can take classes at a community college to get your high school equivalency, but I can't remember, so I'm going for a college. Question 28. When does the legal quiet time begin in Germany? When the sun goes down, when the neighbors go to bed, at midnight, or at 10 p.m.? I've lived in Germany long enough to know that you have to be quiet beginning at 10 p.m. at the latest. Question 29. A man in a wheelchair applies for a job as a bookkeeper. What is an example of discrimination? He doesn't get the position because he's in a wheelchair, he doesn't have any experience, he's asking for too much money, or he doesn't speak English. Obviously, because he's in a wheelchair, the others would be legit reasons for turning him down. Question 30. In the GDR, there were immigrants from Vietnam, Poland, and Mozambique, France, Romania, and Somalia, Chile, Hungary, and Zimbabwe, or North Korea, Mexico, and Egypt. I only know one of these, and it was from a time when I was in college and I needed to change money at the Germany Czech border. We were pointed to the Vietnamese, who do the most money-changing business where we were, so I'm guessing option one, Vietnam, Poland, and Mozambique. Question 31. Which coat of arms belongs to Berlin? Similar to the last question, but I happen to know that Berlin is represented by a bear, so option four. Question 32. What do you call the governmental leader of the city-state of, of Berlin? I feel like this is an exception and Berlin is the only region with this one. Minister, president, head mayor, president of the state or reigning mayor. And I think it's called reigning mayor in Berlin and only Berlin. My colleague told me that. Okay, last question. Number 33. Where is Berlin? <laughs> what is up with all the Berlin questions? Obviously four, but here's where I finally realized that they didn't ask what region I was taking the test from and that they were assuming I was taking the test from Berlin. Makes sense. These were my region-specific questions. <laughs> Fortunately, I actually know something about Berlin. I'd have been in trouble if they thought I wasn't Turing in something like that. 
So submitting the test. Of 33 questions, I got 28 right, or 85%. For not having studied, I thought that was pretty good, especially since I only need 17 to pass. But just for good measure, let's take a look at the five questions I got wrong. Okay, I clearly misunderstood this question. They wanted to know what was allowed by the Constitution, not what was forbidden. Not the death penalty, but fines are allowed. My bad. Oh, this was the one I felt like the answer was between two answers. Just chose the wrong one. This was the one I knew I got wrong. I'm sure several of you were yelling at the screen. 9 November 1938 was Kristallnacht. Sorry, everybody. And the one about the Career Information Center helps fi find teaching jobs, not retirement. Oh, you can't get your high school equivalency at a college, but in an evening high school. Oops. But in general, I'm pretty proud of myself passing on the first try. Go me. I hope you found that entertaining. Please join us for the next vlog to continue to watch my journey to German citizenship.